we have now reached the final round of Pension Pursuit, the game where taxpayers, young and old, face off against their own state politicians and state employees. The question we're going to conclude with is how big are pension liabilities? To figure that out, we have to first know how much money is owed to state employees. In 2014, it was widely reported that state and local pension funds had $3.6 trillion in total assets. The question becomes, is this adequate to fund their pension obligations? And if not, by how much are pensions underfunded? Many researchers compile the self-reported disclosures of pension liabilities from state and local governments. Together, they total $4.8 trillion in future obligations to retirees, implying an unfunded liability of $1.2 trillion. But keep in mind that in their reporting, state and local governments are using overly optimistic assumptions about annual rates of return. They're hoping risky investments pay off in a big way. As we've discussed, this is not the most appropriate way to report these pension obligations. Because these pension liabilities must be honored, they are essentially equivalent to default-free government debt. Consequently, they should be measured using the rate of return on risk-free bonds, such as treasury bonds. A portfolio of treasury bonds that has the same average maturity or duration as pension promises, about 14 years, has a rate of return of 2.8%. With this approach, Hoover Institution research shows that the pension liabilities total $7 trillion. So $3.6 trillion in assets minus $7 trillion in liabilities results in an unfunded total liability of $3.4 trillion, which is almost three times higher than what's being reported. And with the relatively flat stock market of the past few years, the situation has surely worsened. Pension fund investment returns in 2015 and 2016 are likely far below the pipe dream return rates assumed in 2014. If you believe the $3.6 trillion in assets are going to be managed well and generate really high returns, you can hope that the profits from the risky investments will reduce the overall unfunded liability of $3.4 trillion. But there is no guarantee that this will happen, and stating the liability with a built-in assumption of hoped-for risky returns is simply a poor measurement of a government promise. So the key points to take away are 1. Most media coverage of public pensions relies on flawed governmental accounting methods, which are not consistent with well-established principles of financial economics. Two, True liabilities are much higher than what the state reports reveal. 3. And this doesn't even include healthcare obligations, which are typically underfunded. Many entities don't set aside money, yet still promise health coverage for their retirees, covering the cost of care before they become eligible for Medicare, and paying for coverage gaps once they're on Medicare. In most cases, they are not setting aside funds for this health coverage. The bottom line? You might have thought state and local governments were running balanced budgets, but they are not. They're making enormous future commitments to hard-working state employees without making proper provisions to honor them. They're borrowing from tomorrow to pay for today. Future generations will have to pay more in taxes than they will receive in services. Does that sound fair? A growing part of your city's expenditures is on pensions. More and more of it is money that should have been contributed in the past. And as cities and states get further and further behind, it's only going to get worse. Visit PensionPursuit.com to learn more and see what you can do to help.